this video, we'll be demonstrating a concept known as some frequency generation. And we'll be using a Type 1 BBO crystal to demonstrate this. Our laser here is a spectrophysics tsunami. It's pretty common amongst the optics communities. And this one is tuned to 810 nanometers. You can see it here. Uh, we're getting about two and a half watts CW and it's being pulsed at about 80 megahertz and the pulse width is right around 100 femtoseconds. So if we remove this beam block, we have a beam splitting cube here that sends the, off to the probe path to a nonlinear fiber and the other part of the beam goes through a tripler buffer here we're just demonstrating the sum frequency generation concept so we're just going to use the 800 nanometer or 810 nanometer residual output which we have going through this prism and off to some mirrors so if we go around to the other side here probe path comes through this variable attenuator, hits this mirror here, and we could follow the path down here, and it goes through a series of mirrors to our delay line. Uh, this has 50 millimeters of travel, so that translates to roughly about 333 picoseconds. The beam exits hits this mirror and travels to this mirror here and is focused through this objective lens to a photonic crystal fiber and we can generate a broadband super continuum which is very bright. Right now we're coupled with about 100 milliwatts CW810 nanometer. And that it's coupled right into the photonic crystal fiber. And then that's reflected off of a series of mirrors here. It passes through an 800 nanometer long pass filter. So we just get some near infrared. Now the pump beam that passes out of the tripler, we're collecting the uh, 810 nanometer reflected off of this mirror here, travels down here, we refocus the beam or reduce its size since it's fairly large from the beam divergence and anyways we send it to this delay line here which is just, it gives us a rough, a rough um, adjustment case we have to do some tweaking and the pump exits off of here again hits a series of mirrors and then travels to the focusing lens here so at the lens the beam on the right is our 810 nanometer and the beam on the left is our broadband super continuum that single lens we could focus the two beams down at the sample you can see them converge there and here's our crystal which is just a type 1 BBO crystal and if you look closely you can see three beams the one on the left is our pump beam and the beam on the right is the probe and at the center is our some frequency generated wavelength. So through conservation of energy omega 1 and omega 2 the pump and probe pulses that are input to the crystal those photons are annihilated 
when the condition is met of phase matching between the pump and probe, we're able to generate this some frequency generated signal there. So if we look on the spectrometer output, we see it's generated right around 500 nanometers here. So it's a, it's a bluish color, which we can see on the card here. So if we scan the delay line to a position that's at a non-zero delay point, we will see the signal disappear. So I'll shift the delay line right now. a little bit. So I'll shift it even further. And it's almost completely annihilated. Now let's scan past it. See it's generated and then it's annihilated. So let's return to the zero time delay point. And this time we'll watch it on the IR card. So 11.8. important to tune the rotation of the nonlinear crystal such that you're able to both achieve the second harmonic of your pump as well as the second harmonic of your probe beam. And since it's and since your probe is a broadband supercontinuum, the second harmonic of that will generally just be the strongest of the peak in the supercontinuum. So since we're passing it through this 800 nanometer long pass filter, we're generating the second harmonic of about 1,000 nanometers. So it happens to overlap with that of the um, some frequency generated signal here. Sorry about the focusing.